Bookworks, the Pacific Center for the Book Arts' seventh membership exhibition, will be on display in the main library's third floor exhibition hall through December 31st. Here are Dominic Riley and John Demerit to show us some highlights of the exhibit. Hello and welcome once again to the San Francisco Public Library, um, where we're going to be showing you our latest ex exhibition here, which is the Pacific Center for the Book Arts, seventh biannual exhibition. Um, I'm Dominic Riley, bookbinder. This is my identical twin sister, John Demerit. And as you can see, we're wearing our shirts, matching shirts which commemorate the various aspects of book arts. The various and richly California. diverse variety yes. of book arts in oh, the Bay Area yes. and all over California. Absolutely. Yeah. John Demerit, who you may have seen before on this program, is a fine bookbinder, box maker, and teacher from Taurus Bookbindery in Berkeley. And he's going to be uh, showing us some of his uh, favorite things from the show. Yeah. John. And, yeah, and Dominic here from... You're from France, aren't you? Uh, no, England. England, England. Yeah. right. Fine binder from England. Yeah. Working out of his shop and teaching <gasps> and acting. Oh, yes, currently. In Berkeley. Currently, you want to give a plug for your play? Oh, yes, currently the Berkeley Rep in the Caucasian Chalk Circle. Yeah. Only $34. Uh, cheaper, it is. Running for how many more weeks? Oh, about seven more weeks, I think. Right. Don't miss it. So, should we move on to some books? Why not? Let's, right. uh, we're going to look, first of all, at this extraordinary yeah. piece of book um, sculpture. Are and you feeling uh, hungry yet? I certainly am. Mm. Can you hear a ping? Right. Oh. Well, let's bring it over here. Looks like lunch is ready. Ping. Ping. This is a book by Berkeley book artist Lisa Koken, working out of West Berkeley, uh, using primarily uh, found objects as it were. I wonder where she found this in her kitchen. I think, I think she bought that. I don't think she oh, really? it. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Various parts of the book are small jacket with text on it. The text sort of embroidered on it. What there. does it say? It says, now, how was it that I hadn't noticed the door when I rented the apartment? And a small, uh, oh, it looks like a faucet handle. Oh, I thought it was an anchor. Yeah, I thought it was a hammer. You be the judge. Art is so confusing. And, this, and then in the actual yeah. toaster is, I would, this might be the text block, made out of corrugated cardboard, and it looks like some sort of silk. I, I have my surgical gloves on, so I can't really feel it. Mm, mm, mm. With, a, with more of a printed text. Of a nondescript color. A nondescript color. Well, oh, that's what it says. It is actually a very beautiful so it says shade all, of off white. It? This says fear. Uh, it's a sort of metal mesh with these uh, attached metal pieces on there. It's extraordinary, really, isn't it? It's is really. It I don't know. I'm sort of afraid. I, you know, never put anything metal in a toaster. Really? Yeah. I never put anything in your mouth bigger than your elbow. Is that right? Right. I don't know. Okay, that's Unless fair. it's made out of cheese. Okay. Well, let's move this out of the way and move on to our next book. Yeah, that's great. That's one of the strangest things I've ever seen. I don't know what to make of Well, actually, we've got something equally strange coming up here. I'm going to show you this uh, a little bit more traditional, though actually still kind of wacky in its own way. Yeah. This is a book by Steve Woodall, who is... Uh, our favorite man. He's our the, leader. Yes, he's our leader. He's the president of PCBA and has been for a couple of years. Yeah, I think two years. Um, he's also a cab driver, which he is works primarily the most in, interesting yeah. people in the group. He works primarily in Xerox and uh, so-called low-tech. Yeah, Xerox. he and runs um, a series of very interesting workshops fantastic um, teacher. Um, helping people to create art on the Xerox machine, um, cheap, uh, affordable, and uh, versatile art. This is a book. And he gives away all his books. Oh, yeah, he does. Um, this book is called Traditional Styles, and it's a sort of tribute to the, uh, to the shoe, really. Um, these are uh, letterpress uh, printing done by Alice Johnson at the Poltroon Press yeah. in Berkeley. And the images are laser printed on his, on his computer printer, all computer generated artwork. It's really a really fantastic high low combination of Absolutely. styles, and it just works 
Yeah. It comes out like this. Yeah. Uh, an accordion style. A traditional accordion style books that sort of bound into a codex form. This leather on the back is actually the leather that's uh, used to line shoes, I guess for the uh, for the uppers? For the inside of oh, your shoe. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. And uh, the whole thing is tied together with an actual shoelace. Yeah. It's fabulous. Bound by yours truly, by the way. Oh, bound by John. <laughs> Completely forgot to plug him. Happens all the time. And uh, it's from Steve's Press, which is called the Same As That Press, uh, which is right here in San Francisco. Hmm. I, I can't read it. I know. It's upside down. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you should take it out. Oh, John, wrong, wrong camera. Uh, um, this is another thing that appealed to me, and I chose to show uh, today. It's an extraordinary piece of sculpture by uh, Sharon Wind, who's a book artist yeah. living in Berkeley. And, well, I'm not a critic. She's done some canning, I, I think. can certainly just tell you what's inside her. Yeah, it, she has. It's a great thing. It's, um, she's very, I mean, she's putting something up for the winter. She certainly is. This is a piece of uh, gold leather. I don't know whether it's been sprayed. I think it's been sprayed gold, actually. Although you can buy gold, uh, gold yeah, leather. Yeah, maybe something. It's got little marble, uh, glass marbles in the bottom. In Held sand. together with like gold safety pins. Yeah. I don't know if you can see right there. Gold safety pins. A bunch of brass wire. It looks like a headband went awry. Oh, that's a good idea. I haven't thought of that. Yeah. Time. And here, all this text at the bottom, which is at the, at the back, which is um, sort of torn out. I think I think it's been done on the computer, but it's all been torn up and ripped in it. Right. It really doesn't say anything particularly, although, oh, I think that's a Walt Whitman poem there. Yeah. <laughs> it's called Jarring Text, um, and the title has been applied here. And it's a fabulous piece of, you know, esoteric. Uh, yeah. Artistry. It she reminds me. Put it together with tweezers. Do you think so? How did she get all that stuff in there? That's what I'm wondering. Because it won't come out. No false it, bottom. It reminds me also of um, the work of Sver Sardin, who's a, a, a an, another book artist who does sculpture here. Using sculpture a lot. Who does fabulous work. It's, it's a it's a great piece of uh, sculpture and uh, really sort of threatens all those uh, established notions as to what is a book which is yeah. a favorite uh, hobby horse of mine. This certainly is a book, it has text, and uh, it claims to be so, so why not? I think it's great. Right? Yeah, can we move on? And it'll keep till winter. Oh yeah, yeah. You can add to it, you know, over the years, and uh, it's like a sort of stock. Here's a couple of books that are quite interesting. Well, these are more traditional though, aren't they? Sort of traditional chat books by a guy named Jeff Conan. Uh, Wolf Press, makes his own paper. Hmm. He also, he's a, I believe he's a teacher. He teaches the letterpress classes at New College of California. Makes his own paper, does all the work himself. And he's also uh, an apprentice at the West Coast Print Center oh, over okay. in Berkeley. Oh, um, he made this paper. I believe so. Huh. It's great. Two nice little chat books of poems. This one is called Broken Monkeys. And it says, words rush in where monkeys fear to read. <laughs> <laughs> this one's called On Becoming an Angel, and I really like the first line it says, In the mood for becoming an angel? This is by Francis Butler. Tell us about Francis, John. Uh, Francis is one of the founders and proprietors of Poltroon Press, along with our good friend Alistair Johnson. Uh, looks like some sort of traditional bathroom tile with grout here, and she's got these ceramic sculptures of different. Uh, Styles of pasta. Uh, this is part of a series of pieces on. How, how many are there? Uh, two that I know of, and it's based on a. It's this is going to be for a book show at the Smithsonian, based on um, scientific texts, I believe. Oh. And I cannot remember which text this is going to be based on. But this is based on a scientific text. Yes. No, not a cookbook. No. Oh, lasagna. Uh, Can't you tell? I can't read. Penne, ravioli, no. tortellini, tortellini, ziti. I don't know ZT. Is that this one here? Yeah, I believe so. Oh, okay. No, that's... Oh, this is ZT. See, I think tortellini. Oh, oh, okay. I'm getting hungry. Yeah, so am I. Let's have lunch. It really is. It's like a bathroom. It's fabulous. And this is made of wood, and it's got a huge yeah. uh, brass hinge here. And the thing does actually... The thing weighs a ton. Close. And here is Alistair's book. Alistair Johnson. Um, Altroon Press. Yeah. He's a former president of PCBA, I think. Yeah, and uh, a irascible, shamelessly self-promoting, nasty glass region, yeah. awful man, 
Um, Pretentious. Yes, yeah, he was at my house last night, actually, we had a lovely dinner and um, mm. brought some nice wine. He's also... Um, Did he hug you? Oh yeah, oh mm. yeah, yeah. He's a sort of consummate um, world music historian, has his own show on uh, KUSF, is it? Yeah. yeah, Tuesday nights. Tuesday nights, so tune in. Um, if you're not at the theatre seeing me, listen to Alistair. Mm -hmm. This is um, a thing called The Catalyst Notebook, which was inspired, he says, by an article by Steve Lavoie in um, the Ampersand, um, an article that he wrote about filofaxes. The Ampersand is PCBA's uh, publication. I have it right here. This is our quarterly journal, which yeah. is... Uh, which you get quarterly when you join the PCBA. Well, you get it quarterly. That's interesting. And uh, it has some great articles and it's um, very nicely put together. This is um, wooden blocks with um, inlays of wax, which have been uh, carved with yeah. a stylus. Um, held together Actually, with he carved it. Thongs. He told me he carved it with his Swiss Army knife. Oh, he did? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's such a charlatan and a rogue. Um, and he just celebrated his 50th birthday, didn't he, recently? So um, we shouldn't be mean to him. And, uh, but he's always mean to us. It's also an, it, it takes its inspiration from examples, um, book blocks of, a, of, of this kind that were found in England um, and Ireland and are now in, in museums there. Yeah. And it's a great, of course Romans, you know, uh, this is how Romans would write often on these wax tablets held together with, uh, with leather thongs, sort of early codex form. It's great. Chunky. And you can wax your thread with it when no one's looking. Yeah, and the nice thing about it is you can you can scrub this out and write your own words, which is what John and I have done. Well, I've written a done, couple yeah. of poems of mine on here actually, um, because I didn't like what Alistair had put on there. But uh, there we are, Alice Johnson, Catalyst Notebook. Should we go on? Yeah. Next piece is our very uh, Georgiana Greenwood. Well-known local, very well-known local calligrapher, and she's done this fantastic piece. Another sort of, in the same vein that's of Steve Woodall's book, it's really sort of a, it's a Xeroxed photographic image there with some beautiful calligraphy below it, so that the combination, and then she's taken some gold thread and sewn all around it. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Silver thread, S I think, John. Silver, excuse yes, me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sort of dyslexic. You are. Uh, yeah. It's just a fantastically simple. Thing. Eros is always a story in which lover, beloved, and the difference between them interact. And it's just a bunch of guys really um, looking inside a car engine, I think. Probably blowing out their carburetor. Yeah. I think she told me that was a 54 Mercury. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know anything about American cars, I uh -huh. say. Really interest me Let's see, Levi's, Wranglers, uh, Tough Skins. Uh, what's that? Tap, tap, tap. I can't read that, yeah. That's good. Georgiana is actually going to be my calligraphy teacher soon, uh, when I'm not at the theatre. And there's a little uh, wrap that it comes yeah, in. Yeah, sort of a chemise that it comes in. That's French. Oh, chemise, yes. Right. That, was, that, was, that was our word last time, wasn't it? Yeah. And, uh, oh. You have to lay it down, John. Oh. And I know that you want people at home to see it, but I can't do it mid-air. So I try to make batter while going up the stairs. Yeah. It's just a wonderfully simple piece. Beautiful. Our next book is uh, by one of our most influential members, uh, Anna Wolf. Yeah, Anna's been responsible for teaching uh, many of the people um, yeah, in this exhibition. A major influence in the Bay Area. On, you know, on structure, these diamond folds, they're really She does a lot of um, uh, mobiles, you know, for children, and yeah. uh, I have a, a wonderful alphabet mobile that she did, which I sent home to my... She's a very good marbler, too. Oh, yeah. All of oh. which things she teaches classes, and she's taught for years, and really influenced a lot of people, and she de deserves a lot of credit. Yeah. This is a great Wonderful book. teacher and influence in the... Ooh, you can do lots of yeah, things. Sort of like a double helix. Oh. Ooh, Felix the helix. Yeah, you can. And it really returns. It's amazing. It just returns to its storable shape, just like that. Incredible. Now, in contrast to that, we have. What should we look at next? How about the scroll? Yeah. This scroll is by another bookbinder. Is also a member of Handbook Binders, I believe, and yeah. her name is Judith Serabin. 
And this scroll, if we can pull it out. Do you want me to hold this? Yeah, the earliest book form that we know of. And uh, it's really a simple, gorgeous thing. This is a, a piece of wood. Uh, this is, what is this? This is a piece of paper. Handmade paper. Which she has... Um, Looks like it's been printed. Yeah, maybe a printed and, and uh, some illustrations on here. Tiny illustrations of houses, which are on yeah. the street. And then there's a piece of text on the back. Yeah, on here. A text. Which... Uh, Looks like automatic writing to me. Yeah. I can't read it. All held together by a traditional clasp. Wooden clasp here. Mm -hmm. That the whole thing, when you roll it up. So I'm going to do now. Ooh. Wraps around. And ties off. Like so. Right. It's great. It is wonderful. Very small. You know, in case you're wondering where, how we all come together to the show, Dominic is going to say yeah. a few words about our organization before we move on to the next piece. Uh, the Pacific Center for the Book Arts was founded in 1980, after many years of people trying to get an organization like this together, by a group of professional book artists, calligraphers, fine printers, collectors, conservators, restorers, binders, and so on. Have I left anybody out? No, I think the Bay has always had a really rich tradition of book arts, printers. You know, the Pressman's Union was founded here. Uh -huh. the, the fine press movement in the 40s yeah. and 50s, and then all sort of culminated in the PCBA being founded. Yeah. And they are uh, established to foster the promotion of, of, of book arts, People education. in the craft of the book. Yeah. And we have, every two years, we have an exhibition. Um, and we publish the Ampersand, which is the quarterly journal. Yeah. And every month, uh, we publish um, a, a, a small newsletter, newsletter called Etc., uh, which has um, information about events, workshops, um, items available for sale, that kind of thing. It's a great place to pick up printing yeah. presses and equipment generally. Um, so let's move on. This is a book by local printmaker Deborah Orapalo. Done. I think the printmaking was done at Eric's shop. Uh -huh. Eric did the letterpress. He sort of his take. I think these were prints made from. I don't. I don't know where the original images were from, but she's done some prints of them. And I think these are old sort of wallpaper patterns that she's printed on the the opposite side with I think letterpress. The, I think these were uh, faces from a high school yearbook, actually. Yeah. I think that's what they were. Yeah, I think you're right, actually. And then the beautiful binding was done by Peggy Gotthold, uh, another binder from, binder from Berkeley. And she's also a binder at uh, Arion Press. Right. So, a fine, so, um, silk screens. lush book by Tocco. Th these are silk screen then. The images of the face? Yeah, I think so. All of these? All these silk screens? No, they're monoprints. Oh, OK. Yeah, right. yeah it's great. Um, and I love the, the, the colors of the fabric on the binding. binding. This, this is a great, this is rich book cloth. Yeah. This is a gorgeous uh, fabric. These book cloths, I believe, are from Brian Johnson. Yeah. Good. And uh, another accordion binding that will fold up right. very neatly. And it comes with a box, does it, John? No, it doesn't. Oh, just like that. I believe so. It's lovely. OK, good. Wonderful. Good. By uh, a member, Indigo Sam. From Berkeley, the name of our press is Bitchy Buddha Press. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Howards and Hoover's, a sample book of Chinese American male names, made like a, a sort of a standard brands paint sample. Uh, you want to read some of the names? Yeah, there? Garrett, Wilden, right, Constantine, yeah, Wayland. letterpress printed, hand colored with watercolors, and then there's laser printed. Uh, text on looks like mylar. I remember when Nelson was born, I was standing by grandma's buffet where she puts up all the family photos. I believe these are personal recollections of perhaps some of the people. Great. That and she does, knew. It, does it go together? Like yeah. A, like a sample? It's like a... There it is. These three uh, book objects are by Don Meyer. Um, they're called My Media. They That's are. Press's name. That's the name of his press. Yeah. Okay. 
And they're called in order, although I don't know quite which order here, ambiguous contradiction, a paradigm of uncertainty. How does one know? How does one tell? And revealed defenses relieved. Um, they're really, really simple. Yeah, things. wooden blocks held together with brass hinges. hinges. Or in this case, aluminum. And these weird, um, again, whether these have been found or not, I presume they are. They're some kind of gratings or something. What would you say? Yeah. They look like, they look like I mean. something that he made, I think. Mm. Who knows? The back here, they have a strange sort of acoustic effect. They have a, a, an interesting tactile resonance yeah. to them. Um, an image here of a fur cone. This one says mending plate, not for trusses. Ah, that's a found object, I'd yes. say. Yes. Um, this is gorgeous. This is a piece of plexiglass enclosed inside it in this compartment yeah. is um, a dried, uh, what looks like a little rose, I'd say. Yeah. But here's the image of it in a black and white photograph. On the Versa. It really is a, yeah. a cute little image um, and a, a little chunky book art expression. The back, the whole thing, you see these screws are held in with these little, do you call these wing nuts? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that great? Good. Okay, we have the... Um, right. right. Um, well, whose book is this? Is, is this your book? No, no, that's my I... tissue. It's got a cold. A book by uh, Gabrielle A. Ella. Elia. Elia. A wonderful sculptural book. He's, I, I don't know if the camera can get it, but it's a, almost like a, an adobe or a, sort of a, some sort of brick material. That's, yeah. He's molded around this grate to, make, to look like a window. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful piece. Uh, it has a wonderful tactile feel. I wish I could feel it. Yeah, this book is called, um, well, can you read that? You're better at reading Spanish than I am. Mi ultimo adios, my last goodbye. It's a tribute to Jose Rizal, who was a um, Filipino national hero. And the, the book opens up in a great accordion style, like this. And it just goes on and on and on. Um, he's letterpress printed this onto a beautiful paper, and he's yeah. burnt a hole in each page. The hole gets bigger and bigger, and yeah. if we can fold this back up again. We can see the hole. This is very a wonderfully inventive. finished piece. The yeah. hole ends up with a sort of faux medallion that he's inlaid into here with a, a, a medallion mm. uh, head representing Rizal there. Uh, again, mounted on this sort of plinth. It's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful sort of piece adobe of Adobe surface to it. Yeah. Um, Wonderful. And it goes back inside the box, like so. To me, the John, this looks like a prison. Though, yeah, it you? does. Um, it's very lightweight too, and it looks a lot heavier than it yeah. is. It's really, really one of the finer pieces of the show. I yeah, think. I think so. Uh, that's that's about it for what we have on the table. We've certainly only shown you a, a small fraction of what is in our show. Uh, there's oh, over. There's more. Oh yeah! Ooh, if you go out in the hallway, if you come down to the San Francisco Public Library to the third floor on the way to the special collections, the show is up through the end of December. There's more than 150 books in the show. It's a, the, the, the PCBA membership, is this is really one of their finer shows. It makes, so makes handy book finders look like a little oh, newspaper like scan, doesn't it? Quick! Oh. Uh, yeah, there's really far and away one of the, the, the best book show of the year in my opinion. Mm. So make sure you come down and see the library. Um, is always very generous about putting the show on for us every year. Yeah. So um, from John Demerit and Dominic Riley, yes. uh, it's goodbye from the San Francisco Public Library and we'll see you soon, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's about 12 o'clock. I'm kind of hungry. Yeah, you got some lunch? Yeah. yeah. What have we got? Toast? Here. I think it'd be good with some pickles. Oh, okay. Uh, I've got gold pickle, mm. a marble pickle and um, Sprinkle a little sand on, will you? Okay, yeah, sure. Thank you. Mm.